I have not listed a new product in my shop since December. And I feel like this leaves the question of, well, how is my shop doing? Is it seeing sales? Is it growing? What's going on with it? I feel like my shop has been kind of just on autopilot, which I'm not complaining. I think that goes to show just how passive print on demand can truly become when you do put in the time. I think that Passive income sometimes gets a little bit confused for doing nothing and earning an income. I don't think that there's any form of income, passive income especially, that you can do nothing and see a reward. There's always going to be some phase of growing a passive income stream that involves work and time investment. But what I consider passive income and what print on demand being passive has meant to me is the last year, I really worked on building my shop, growing my shop, getting it just kind of rolling on its own. And year to date, I have not done anything in my shop besides just customer service, looking through my orders, just making sure that everything looks as it should. And for this year, my shop has sold over $32,000 which compared to this time last year, that is a 167% increase. So if that isn't the compound effect and showing the results of that hard work and those actions and what that can lead to with time, then I don't know what is. So with that being said, I am going to be listing some new products in my shop today and just taking you along with me. It was this time last year that I actually saw the most growth in my print on demand business. From April to May, I nearly doubled my revenue. I went from around a 5,000 ish dollar month to a nearly $10,000 month. And I think that anybody who has a print on demand business can see a ton of growth in these next few months. And I hope that maybe this is a video that you can play in the background as you are creating and listing for your shop as well. Something that's been very interesting for me this year around is last year I was using the tools, I was doing the research, looking up keywords and niches, all of the things that you're supposed to do, finding the high search, low competition, and all of that information is super helpful. And I truly attribute a lot of my growth in this time last year to E-Rank and to Everbee because that's when I actually started really diving into using research tools. But there is also so much value in just the data that you actually see firsthand as you go through those different seasonal events and trying out different niches and just seeing what is working within your own shop. And so going into these next few months, like April, May, June, where I saw a lot of growth last year, I feel like I have a much more solid foundation now in that I know exactly what was working for me last year, what I saw the most growth with. And there's definitely opportunities that I'm really excited to dive into this year. I feel like it's very easy to compare and think, oh, well, this individual, this person, they saw this amount of sales during this month, their first year or in their first year in general, and think that if you're not seeing those same numbers and those same levels that you are not made for this or you're not doing well or you're just failing. And that just really isn't the case. I really just don't think it's something that can be fairly compared against one another. But my point in this is, is if you're in your first year and growing your print on demand business, growing your Etsy shop, you have so much data at your fingertips of what your listings are doing, whether they're getting views, whether they're getting some favorites, you know, even better if they're getting some sales, all of those are data points that you can actually analyze to figure out where you should be investing more time, maybe investing less time. And that's what I was doing with the data of my shop last year. And this year it serves in a whole new magnitude of how I'm going to strategize and focusing on what I will be listing in my shop this year and what I won't be listing in my shop this year for me personally. Any listings that you are seeing momentum with, seeing an increase in views with, seeing favorites, seeing sales, those are the listings that you are going to want to make a note of. What was the niche? What was the types of keywords that you used within that listing? What type of mock-up images did you use? What colors were you offering? If it was a product that had different color variations, 
that is all really valuable information that you will be able to use and carry into other niches and other listings. But also when it comes to this time next year, you are going to want to have that information to know where to prioritize your time. And so a niche that I saw tons of traction with last year, I recently shared it in another video and it's one of the niches that are in my niche calendar, but that is the teacher retirement niche. And this time last year, it was a niche that I only had a handful of listings for. It wasn't something that I put a lot of time into. I was focused on tons of other niches and reflecting back, I wish I would have put more time and energy into creating products for the teacher retirement niche. This is a niche that I greatly underestimated last year, but I am not gonna be making that same mistake this year. While I saw traction with it, I know that there was just so much more opportunity if I would have dedicated more time to that niche, but that's behind me. I now have that information. I'm now giving you that information. Do with that what you will. And that is what I'm going to focus on today. For me, when it comes to listing any new product in my shop, I always start with my research first. I do not just start designing and just creating what I think is in demand, what I think is going to sell. I always find my keywords and I always look at other trending designs to get a better idea of what is actually working. And so I have compiled a list here of different keywords that I may be potentially targeting with my teacher retirement listings. I did use E-Rank to pull all of this information, but I did find some really great keywords and I'll share a little glimpse right here at the analytics for them. Some really great long tail keyword phrases that I found were retirement gifts for woman teacher and teacher retirement gifts for women. Also retirement gift for teacher, principal retirement. This is something that was of course, a lot more niche, a lot more specific, but often those are honestly really the great things to target because they're so low competition and the search volume is still there. Something else that I will point out, I'll put a little video right here showing, I always pay attention to the search trend, which is a paid feature of E-Rank. I have their basic plan for this very reason. And what you're able to see with the search trend is the spikes throughout the year for when these specific keywords are at their peak. So when it's a niche like retirement and specifically teacher retirement, teachers often retire at the end of the school year. So that is going to typically be when that spike occurs. And anytime you're targeting something that is more seasonal, like I would consider this to be because it really only sells mainly in a specific season of the year. I always try to design for these spikes about eight to 12 weeks in advance, especially for a brand new shop. So if you see something that the spike is right now or the spike is next month, Honestly, I would make a note of it, save it for next year when you can design a little bit more in advance. But I personally would just target things that I'm going to be seeing spikes for in the next two to three months. I think that's going to give your listing a little bit more of an opportunity to rank organically, see some momentum in terms of getting some views, some favorites. That way, when the spike comes or the masses come looking for that particular keyword phrase that you're targeting, you are already going to be a little bit better ranked, reaping the benefits and seeing the sales of that particular niche that you're targeting. As I finish up my research phase for listing a product, I have all of the keywords that I'm looking to target for it. This is what will make up my title in my tags of my listing. The next step that I always dive into is creating my designs. Now, this is something that when I'm operating in pockets of time, which I know many of you also work full time as you're building your shops. So with that, it can be really helpful to sometimes bulk design, especially if you're just targeting one specific niche. You don't need to redo your SEO and have different SEO for every single listing, but you can go and just bulk create a bunch of designs, maybe create like five to 10 or just whatever you have time for. I know that that's something that personally helped me a lot when I first started 
trying to grow my shop and trying to get up a bunch of listings and just trying a bunch of different things. The other time saver that has really helped me with my efficiency in this process is having listing templates. So when I have a specific product type that I'm designing for, I create a template for it. And in that template, I have all of the different listing images that I include every single time with that chosen product type. And all I have to do in that listing template is just replace the design that is in it. All in all, these are the steps that I follow every single time I create a new listing on Etsy. I find that by just having a process and a routine, I found this has really helped with my efficiency in listing because I'm just repeating a lot of the same tasks over and over again. I managed to get up about 12 listings and it has been a little over an hour and a half. Now, do not let that discourage you if you're like, well, I can't list that many listings in that time frame. Let me explain to you how I actually listed that many listings in only about an hour and a half. As you saw, I wrote down all of my keywords, those keywords and the SEO that I am using for this specific niche, I reused across every single listing. I do have a lot of information and data behind some of those keywords for what worked for me last year as well. So that helped streamline that process a little bit. I created four unique designs and those four unique designs I placed on a listing and then I actually duplicated that listing twice. So each unique design is showcased across three separate listings. The only difference between those three separate listings is the thumbnail image. So I am testing three different thumbnail images on basically the same design and SEO. This is something that I love testing. I love testing different thumbnail images and just seeing how I could improve the click through and conversion on my listings. And it's a super simple way for you to start A-B testing different mock-up images in your listings and seeing what works best for you in your shop. So really technically I created four listings and in those four listings, I duplicated them to get me to the 12 listing mark. My goal throughout the next few days is actually to continue listing. I would love to get up up to 100 new listings in my shop that are really geared towards the niches that I saw success with last year. I also wanted to ask for your feedback on an idea that I have. I think it would be interesting to start a shop from scratch, completely a brand new, and document it. So if that's something that you would be interested in seeing, please let me know in the comments down below, as well as what part of starting a new shop in that process and documenting that process would you be most interested in seeing? If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to boop the subscribe button down below. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and found value in it. As always, I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and I will see you in the next one.